Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time and this week's topic guys is how to make a living in one hour a day trading the bull momentum play. This week's topic guys is how you can make money trading the market open. If you don't have a, that much time or you maybe only have 30 minutes a day, an hour a day, et cetera and so forth, then this lecture is for you, okay? You can start your day at nine o'clock, scan for some gaps and right around 9.30 to 9.35, right in that first five minutes of the market open, that's what we're gonna talk about today. How you can take advantage of the market open, take one, two, maybe as many as three trades quickly and literally be done. Okay, in that short of a period of time. This isn't to say that if you're brand new and you've never traded before, you're gonna get rich quick. I don't show that crap, that's garbage, okay? Trading is a very challenging business, but you can make money quickly and early in the day if you know what you're doing, if you're good with order entry, and if you have a pre-trade checklist. So today's lecture, guys, is for those people that like that hit and run approach, that scalping approach, and they wanna get in early and they wanna get out quick. Right, like I said, mainly because of time constraints, but even if you don't have time constraints, it's still a very profitable way to trade. So we're gonna talk about that today. Um, I think it's a good lecture. It's about 45 minutes like most of my lectures are, but I think you're really gonna to wanna to watch this one because of the simplicity of it. But there still is things to learn like the quality of the gap, the pre-market chart, as well as when to get in. Is it 9.30 right off the open? Do you wait for a minute? Do you wait for two or three minutes? How do you share size appropriately because of the, the spreadiness and the whippiness of stocks at that time of the day? So it's all in the lecture. Um, you should check it out because I think it's one of the better lectures I've done in a while. As always, if you like this, please click that like button. If you like the channel, please, Subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of great information here on the Live Traders YouTube channel. I'm Jared Wesley. Let's get to it. All right, today's lecture topic is trade the open with the opening range breakout or the bull momentum play. Okay. Um, you guys sometimes are, are from time to time hear about the ORBs, the opening range breakouts from Unmol uh, in his strategy course and so on and so forth. I call them bull momentum plays. You can call it an opening range breakout. It doesn't really matter what the specific terminology is, um, but today we're going to talk about how to take advantage of the market open um, aggressively. And I, I use that term because I want the newer traders to understand, and we will talk about this in a few minutes, that... Um, these aren't always something new traders should be doing per se, right? They're not for the faint of heart. They are aggressive trades. It doesn't mean that they're bad trades. It just means they're more aggressive. And we'll talk about why that's important um, here in a few minutes, okay? But before we do any of that, we have to do our weekly when will the insanity stop. Today, I have two installments for you. One is... One takes the cake. I think we have an all-timer, okay? One is just a normal garden variety, when will the insanity stop? And the second one is, oh my goodness, but really not that bad. <laughs> You're like, huh? All right, so the first one, guys, is, well, this is what gambling looks like. Um, this is somebody, somebody emailed this to me. Um, I'm just gonna read what I enclosed in the box here. If I didn't mess with shorting the QQQ on Monday, I would have 166 times what I have now in my account after today. I'll skip down. I have half of 1% of my account left from Monday shorting this. I'm gonna repeat that since I have half of 1%. That's not 1%, that's half of 1% left of my trading account. Um, Maybe you should think about using a stop loss before you get down to that point. Just a hunch, just a little friendly advice. Um, did I not go long and make three times more versus losing 90% of my account in one trade? Revenge trading has cost me millions. I don't know how many millions or how much money specifically, uh, but this person has one half of 1% of their account left. Guys, just stop, man. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Like. I bring these up every week and at some point it gets kind of like over and over. We hear the same thing, but they're from different people, different trades, different amounts of money, but you're not 
better than the market. You're not smarter than the market, okay? And you're gonna find this out on the next slide because this one, this one takes the cake, all right? This one takes the cake. And some of you probably have read this article. I think it came out yesterday. You ready for it? Boom. Deep regrets. Billionaire admits he lost $41 million day trading stocks. Now there's two ways to look at this. One, who cares, he's a billionaire or holy shit, he lost $41 million. I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, rich people do stupid things too. Don't ever, ever think you're better than the market, okay? Don't ever think you're better than the market. That's what I want you to take from this slide. Clearly, this person isn't an idiot. They've made billions of dollars in their career, in their lifetime, right? But it doesn't mean you can't do stupid things. And the problem in trading is this, and I don't want to spend too much time on this, okay? Here's the biggest problem in trading. You can do the right thing most of the time, but it only takes one or two times doing the wrong thing to destroy your entire account, okay? And some of you won't like my analogy, and I really don't care, okay? It's like when people say, oh, those protests are peaceful most of the time. Well, if you're rioting 1% of the time, it's bad. I liken that to saying, well, that murderer is a good person most of the time. Well, during that moment of irrational exuberance when they killed somebody and it only took five minutes to do it, you're right. 99.9999% of their life, they did nothing wrong. But during that five minute span, they did. And now they spend the rest of their life in jail. That's an appropriate analogy because you might do the right thing 99% of the time. But during that five minutes or 10 minutes that you don't take a stop loss and the stock tanks against you and the next day you still choose to stay in it and stay in it and stay in it and stay in it and, in it and average your way down, most of the time you've done the right thing. But during that one trade, that momentary lapse of reason cost you your entire trading career, your entire trading account, okay? I'm serious, this is not a joke. Take those analogies, both of them to heart because they're appropriate for trading. You might do the right thing most of the time. You don't get paid for that. You gotta do it all of the time because that one time might be the difference between having a trading account and not having a trading account, okay? All right. All right, I brought this up just because last week I, I pulled up the same thing. Where will Tesla be in one year? When will the insanity stop? Well, Tesla's had a rough couple days, all right? I bring this up to show you one thing. Anything that gets this crazy and this climactic always has a pullback. Sometimes they go way further than we ever expect or think they'll go, like Tesla being up 500% this year for really no good reason. They've done nothing special this year compared to any other year, compared to any other year. But now you can see what happens when things get irrationally exuberant. This is not to say that Tesla won't break $500 at some point, okay? It may or very well probably will, but you're gonna have a nasty pullback or a consequence. Okay, at some point. My point simply is when you see charts like this, you see this chart over here from Tesla, that massive topping tail, it pulled back from just under $200 down to what? 60. Okay, and then it went from 60 to 500, now 500 over here down to 330. Okay, and it's up a little bit today. All right, don't be that idiot. Don't think that this goes up in perpetuity without repercussion, like the 07 housing market. There's still people that are underwater on their homes 13 years later. Be smart, use stop losses, trail out your trades, and just don't think blindly that things will go higher forever, okay? All right, let's dig in. Early bull momentum plays. These are hit and run type plays. These are trades that we're talking about basically in the first five minutes of the day from 9.30 to 9.35, and, and to be clear, this doesn't mean that you can't trade some of these stocks after 9.35. I'm simply speaking of a specific time frame of the day that allows us to take trades aggressively because of the gap, okay? So let's dig in. <coughs> Excuse me. So guys, the things you wanna consider, and these are important things you need to consider. 
all right? Because these are aggressive patterns. They can be highly profitable, but they're aggressive at the same time. So the first thing, and this is number one, I would say honestly that as important as the bull momentum trade is or the opening range breakout trade is, the gap is equally or if not more important than the actual pattern you take. Let me repeat that. The gap you choose is more important than the actual entry you choose at 9.30 or 9.32 or 9.33 or something like that, okay? So you must have a high level gap. You have to start with quality, okay? It's like an engine. If you start and you mess up something in the engine block, right? Say you don't mill something properly or the tolerance is off. Guess what? The rest of the engine build is crap. Got it? For those of you that like cars out there, if you choose a crap gap, a bad gap, Forget about the bull momentum play or the bear momentum. Just forget about it. These can only be possible or only happen with high level gaps. So level one type gaps, high level two type gaps. And before people say, oh my gosh, what's a level one gap? A level one gap is the highest quality gap that we teach. It's in professional trading strategies. Okay, there's some form of shock value related to this gap. It's something where you wake up and go, wow, what the heck happened here? or you almost feel, I say almost feel bad for the people that actually were in the stock yesterday. Level one gaps are the best of the best. Without a level one gap, or in some cases a very high level two gap, you're not going to be taking a bull momentum play. This is important, and the reason I'm spending so much time and repeating myself five times over this is because some of you out there are gonna take some random crappy gap and buy a one minute high on it and go, look, Jared, it worked. I'm a genius. You're not a genius, you're an idiot, okay? And it's not gonna work most of the time. Take a high level gap, and if you don't have a high level gap, then the bull momentum play, it, it's irrelevant, okay? It's irrelevant, okay? So not required, but a nice pre-market chart is recommended. If you can find yourself a nice tight consolidation, a nice controlled pullback, perhaps even some form of climactic um, pre-market chart, that is highly recommended, but not required. But again, for me, it's almost a requirement, okay? significant pre-market volume. Guys, this is really important. If you don't have massive institutional commitment, okay, something that is at a minimum, bare minimum, five times normal volume. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're going, well, how do I know what the average pre-market volume is? You might not on a lot of stocks, right? I don't know what the average pre-market volume of Tiffany's is, but I know if it's doing 2 million shares in the pre-market today, that's not normal. That is way above average for a stock like Tiffany, okay? If you see Amazon doing a million shares in the pre-market, that is much higher than normal, okay? So you may not know exactly what each individual stock normally does as pre-market volume, but you need to have something, okay, that is significantly bigger than the normal volume, okay? So the reason that's important is we wanna see commitment. And we don't wanna see mom and pop commitment, we don't want to see, I'm joking when I say this, but we don't want to see Reddit commitment. We don't want to see Robin Hood commitment. You know, all those people that are moving the market. <laughs> Some people out there are pretty naive, are they not? All right. We want to see commitment from the largest banks in the world, the largest hedge funds in the world. Okay. Real institutional power behind this. Okay. It's very important because if there's institutional money in it, they're not going to let their investment go to shit. Okay, it's not gonna happen like that. So if you're looking at a stock in the pre-market, it's got 12,000 shares, it's not good enough. If it's got 500,000 shares, now we're talking. 80,000 shares, 100,000 shares. And I'll show you a couple examples in, in a minute or two. Okay, but significant pre-market volume, okay? Now this doesn't mean you can't put other gaps on your list that don't have significant pre-market volume. We are specifically talking about bull momentum plays, specifically. Okay, so make sure if you're, if you're looking to get into something on a one minute high or a very early trade, it has big volume in the pre-market. Relative strength to the market, i.e. if the market's gapping down, you want your stock to be gapping up. If the market's gapping up a little bit, you want your stock to be gapping up more than the market. Okay, so relative strength or relative weakness uh, is generally, it's not required, but it's generally very important to have because again, it shows that commitment. The stock doesn't care what the market's doing. It's on its own page and that's what we're after. 
Anything to give us an edge. High level gap gives us an edge. A nice pre-market chart gives us a bigger edge. Huge volume gives us an even bigger edge. Relative strength to the market, even bigger edge, okay? So all those things are helping make these trades more reliable. And the reason that's important is because they're aggressive to begin with, right? When a trade's aggressive, we want as much reliability as we can get because we're already being aggressive as, as it is, right? So it's usually a good idea to wait at least a minute before entering. This isn't to say you can't jump in one second after the market opens or 10 seconds. It's just saying it's always nice to see what that first one minute bar does. All right, gives us a little bit more confirmation. The longer you wait, the more confirmation you typically get, okay? So the worse the gap, the longer we have to wait. And this is why the high level level one gap is so important, all right? Because the gap in and of itself is a form of confirmation, okay? And the crappier the gap is, the lower form of confirmation, which we don't want. Important, find a pre-market consolidation or a pivot low for your stop loss. So what a lot of people will do on these, and again, there's tons of examples here, don't worry. What a lot of people will do is they'll take a one minute high and they'll put their stop loss under the one minute bars low. Well, that could be a 10 cent bar, it could be a $1 bar, but most of the time, that's a, a stop loss that's probably too tight. Not always, but probably too tight. So what you want to be looking for, guys, is some form of pre-market pivot, some form of pre-market consolidation where you can move your stop loss to that area because these stocks are going to be spready. They're going to be whippy. I'll talk about that in a few more minutes. And that means you should give them a little more room. And because you're getting in early, you don't have to worry about the average trading range of the stock because you're getting in so early, the stock likely has a lot more room to move. So give it a little extra room on the stop loss because it will be spready and it will be whippy. Not probably spready, not probably whippy, it will be, 100% chance, okay? So let's take a look. The first thing we're gonna do, guys, as always, it's called the top-down approach. It doesn't matter what trade you take, whether you're trading at 10 o'clock, 10.30, 2 in the afternoon, or 9.31 in the morning. We always start with a higher time frame. So a nicer gap or a nice gap equals a potentially more aggressive entry, meaning the more aggressive entry is likely okay. So if you take a look at this chart right here, okay? This is a stock that pulled back one, two, three, four days, four red days in a row. And what's happening? It's gapping up over that area. See this pivot right here? So you're taking out four days of sellers. Now, granted, they pulled back to the $8 area, which is support, but I think we would all agree that nobody was expecting this stock to go from $8 and gap up to nine-ish overnight. Maybe you thought the stock would slowly grind back up like it did over here and like it did over here. But this is what we call shock value. Okay, it's gapping over a significant pivot with room back up to 10 to $10.25. There's a double top here. This has to be the target area. So we're already starting. We're already beginning with high quality. If you start with junk, junk in, junk out. Okay, that's the way you have to take it for bull momentum plays. This is a hit and run approach. You'll be done in five to 10 minutes trading these things. You will be done by 945 at the latest. Okay, so choose and start with a high quality gap in this case we have a lot of shock value we're gapping over a pivot over all these red bars so every single person not part of them not half of them not some of them every single person who shorted this stock and held it is a loser today right so if you shorted here shorted here shorted here and shorted here and you still held and you woke up today and the stock was at nine dollars you're a loser today. You are minus, you are negative in your trading account. That doesn't feel good. Well, what happens when people lose on stocks, especially when it gaps against them? A lot, not everyone, because there are some stupid people out there. A lot of people are like, you know what? I need to get out of my position. I need to buy to cover. Well, if you're shorting the stock and you buy to cover, buying to cover is the same as buying. You're pushing the stock higher. So this is why the concept works because all these people here that shorted it, don't get me wrong, some people just sold the stock, but a lot of people shorted the stock and now they're, well, they're up shit's creek, right? The stock's going against them and they want out at all costs. The fire in the building is burning and everybody wants out of the door, but only so many people can get out at one time. 
So they all buy, 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 and it pushes the stock higher. So now our job is what? Find an entry, find an entry. But with this type of gap, it allows us to be very aggressive with the entry. So it looks something potentially like this, okay? So same gap on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, what do we have? We have a pre-market chart. And this pre-market chart is consolidating very nicely in the post-market from the previous day and in the pre-market today. So you're sitting here right in the $9 range, okay? Topping tail, bottoming tail, chopping around, and then we get this nice tight consolidation. Now you'll note right here where the volume starts to spike, this is the market open. This little gray dotted line is the market open. Well, in this case, the stock was able to consolidate or trade below $9 for a few minutes before it actually triggered. But had this stock broken nine right at 9.30 or 9.31, you would have taken it. So you're going to get in at $9. You're gonna place your order as soon as the market opens. I mean, as soon as the market opens at 9.30, place your order at nine bucks. Now here's the rub though. Do you wanna give this thing a stop loss at 8.85 or do you wanna give it a stop loss at like 8.75? When I took this trade, I chose the tighter stop because this stock was a little bit tighter. But you can see by the topping tail that this thing got really jiggy off the open, didn't it? It went from 9 to 9.22, right back to 9, and then it ripped to 9.80. The reason I'm showing this and spending time on this topping tail is this is why normally it's better to give them a little bit more room. I didn't in this particular trade, but I think 975, sorry, 8, 875 is probably the more appropriate stop loss. Give up the extra 10 cents. You're getting in as early as you can possibly get in anyway. Give yourself a little bit more protection. The stock ends up going almost 80 cents, 3 to 1, 3 to 1 on your money, okay, um, and then ripping higher, all right? So again, looks good at 9. You could use 885 but 875 is more appropriate. Why was this possible? Because of the gap and the pre-market chart, all right? So here's another one. Notice, one minute high off the open, and honestly, there's not a whole lot of other great entries. There's this little kind of miniature turnaround bar right here. There's a possible buy setup right here, okay? But basically, this stock went from $14 to like $15.20, and never looked back. And you can see right here, right before the market opened, I say, I like ARWR over $13.90 to $14 early on, right? Super early on. Now, why would I do that? Just be like, oh yeah, you know, just kind of cool. I think I'll just buy a one minute high. This is unfortunately what too many people do. They just see a stock and like, oh, it kind of looks strong. I'm just gonna buy the one minute high. Don't. You have to have some form of confirmation. That was the whole purpose of that slide with regard to volume, with regard to the institutional commitment, with regard to the level of the gap, with regard to having a nice pre-market chart. Okay, but you can see right here, this is a stock I was very, very interested in a minute or two before the market opened. Now, here's the rub though. You're sitting there going, is this a level one gap? Well, for those of you that know what a level one gap is and a level two and a level three gap, I think you'll know that this is not a level one gap, right? This is a stock that's kind of stuck in a range, right? It's holding support here at like $11, moves up, pulls back, moves up, pulls back. And then it has this little, I say pseudo, I say pseudo bicep because we're really in a sideways trend right here. Leaves a bottoming tail, has a small gap up right here, and then this is the day that I'm referring to, right here, the big green bar, okay? So it opens right in that $13.90 to $14 area and rips. So is this something, guys, that we would traditionally buy a one minute high on? Just give me a yes or no. Is this something we would traditionally just say, yeah, sweet, I'm gonna buy a one minute high on? No, exactly right. Wow, it's amazing. Everyone got it right. There's always somebody out there who, who gives the wrong answer. This, this is a 100% no's. Good for you guys. No, this is not something that we would traditionally say, sweet, let me find the earliest possible, most aggressive entry that I can find. Okay? We wouldn't. So why in the world 
would I be saying something so silly and irrational and stupid as in, I really like ARWR early off the open? Because this type of gap needs extra confirmation. More confirmation is needed. So what do we do? How do we get the confirmation? There's two ways you can get the confirmation. Okay. One is to wait, right? That's, that's one way. Wait, wait, five, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Wait. Okay. That's one way. And the other way is you're like, Hmm, I don't know, Jared, get a really good pre-market pattern with volume. Get a really, really good pre and post market pattern with big volume. Okay. They're the only two things you can get there. You either wait till you get more confirmation or till you get a better entry later on, or you get a really good pre-market consolidation. In this case, we got the latter. We got a really good pre-market consolidation. We're able to be so aggressive because of this. So my point I'm making is this gap normally and traditionally isn't good enough to buy a one minute high, but because this pre-market was so good, on volume, it was good enough to take that chance, okay? So you get in at 1390, if you wanna wait for 14 because it's a whole number, that's fine. Put your stop loss under the consolidation at 1360 to 1365, and this thing rips, absolutely rips. Goes from 1390 to 1550, okay? That's a $1.50, $1.60 move on a 30 to 40 cent stop loss. You're getting three or four to one relatively quickly, right? But the key again is understanding the gap. So you could make an argument that today's lecture is just as much about the gap quality as it is the trade entry quality, right? It really is because the higher the quality of the gap, the more aggressive we can be, the lower quality of the gap, the more time and patient we need to be, okay? So now, Here's another example. I apologize, I forgot to add the daily. I just realized this now. I forgot to add the daily chart. Oh, well. Here's a beautiful pre-market consolidation, okay? This allows us to be a little bit more aggressive, okay? So we get in right off the market open. You can see here, off the market open means seven seconds into the day. This is 9.30 in seven seconds. Literally seven seconds into the day, I'm buying this stock, $23, with a stop below the base at $22.75. Okay. And in a matter of 10 minutes, this stock is up a dollar. That's a pretty good return. That's four to one. Now, again, I didn't get four to one on this, but the point is this thing made a pretty good return. A thousand bucks in, I don't know, five minutes, four minutes. There it is at the bottom. This trade took four minutes and that's not bad. Okay. Possible because of the pre-market chart. Again, I apologize. I forgot to put the daily gap on here. My bad. All right, but the reason you're able to get this right off the open is because of the pre-market consolidation. All right, let's take a look at another one. So now we have what? We start with the daily chart. We have a red bar right here, and it's gapping not only over the red bar, but it's gapping over the prior pivot. So this is a stock that's already in an uptrend. We know this because of the moving average, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low. All right. But for whatever reason, the previous day, the stock gapped up and just rolled over. Don't know why, don't care. But a lot of people sold off, maybe shorted the stock and today it gaps up. So something like this is close to a level one gap. It's a wide range bar. There's a pivot. You could argue this is a pivot. It's gapping just enough to clear that pivot, doing so on big volume. So it's a level one, level one minus. It's very close. It's just a matter of whether or not you consider this to be a double top or multiple pivots versus one pivot, but it's close. So it gives us an opportunity to be very aggressive, get in at $50, put your stop under the one minute low. Now, again, this is an example where you probably wanna look for a pre-market chart and put your stop under that pivot because a 40 cent stop loss on a $50 stock sounds reasonable, and it is, except when it's 9.30 in the morning because stocks are spreadier at that time of the day. They're whippier at that time of the day, which means gives yourself a little more protection because you might get whipped out only to watch the stock go higher. I got in this stock at 9.31 and 26 seconds, okay? And it worked and I was out in a minute, literally a minute, 
less than it. It was six is 50 seconds, all right? 50 seconds. That's how fast this thing popped. And that's what you're looking for, all right? For a quick 900 bucks, okay? Now, if you guys recall, this was yesterday. You guys remember GM yesterday? So we traded GM relatively aggressively yesterday, okay? This gap is what relative strength looks like. I always get that question from people, Jared, well, what is relative strength? Well, relative strength is the stock compared to the market. Now, I understand this is New York, this is the NASDAQ. Guys, I could have pulled up the SPY if I wanted, right? It doesn't really matter which one you look at. But the market gapped down yesterday, okay? And you can see this picture was taken a little bit later, but it was down 5.5%. In the morning, the, the market gapped down, I think it was 3.7%, all right? Well, GM gapped up yesterday. And not only did it gap up, it gapped up just enough to break above a double top, right? You have this wide range red bar from a few days back. You have this pivot over here from June. This red line is the resistance point. See where the body of the bar is, the green body? That is the opening price. And then you can see GM moved a little lower, then GM moved all the way back up and then pulled back a little late in the day. Okay, so it's gapping over a double top. It's gapping over not a red bar, but a little doji bar, and then part of this red bar right here. All while what? The market's gapping down massively. Like this is unquestionably, unequivocally a mega gap in the market. Nobody will ever argue that. When the market gaps down 1% or 2%, it's a mega gap. The Qs started the day down 3.7 yesterday. So now we automatically have relative strength. I'm interested. I'm interested. Why? Because it's rare for a stock, if you'll notice, and I think you guys do, when you have a mega gap, the opposite side of the gap, the gap list is really thin. Meaning, if you have a mega gap down, the long list is really small. If you have a mega gap up, the short list is really small. So to have anything on the long list is something I want to pay attention to. So this is what it looked like. Sorry, it's a little bit blurry, but I had to take a picture of the recording, right? I recorded the pre-market yesterday. So this is my dollar gainers and dollars losers list in the pre-market. I want to repeat that so you're paying attention. This picture was taken, as you can see, before the market opened. This is taken at like, I don't know, 9.15 in the morning. By 9.15 in the morning, GM already had 1.5 million shares printed. M -m million shares printed okay this isn't reddit users okay this isn't robin hood traders i can't even people people say that with a straight face okay this is institutions all right so this is what the pre-market capitalists look like right dollar gainers it's sorted in price by dollar highest dollar gainers the lowest dollar gainers i went down the list i was like wow Click, 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 click. I see the chart. Why is this fascinating? Because GM is gapping over this topping tail, this pivot, this pivot, and there it is in the pre-market. And the market's doing this. See that tiny little dot in the bottom corner? See it right there? That was what the market was doing. And GM's doing this. I'm interested. I'm interested early and aggressively. In this particular case, I liked it over 32. But that's not where it was by the time the market opened. I thought, well, if we can get it and trade it from 32 up to the high, which is like 32.70, sweet. Get a quick 50, 60 cent pop, walk away from it. This is what it looks like before the market opens. Everybody always asks me, yeah, that's great, Jared. You show us that stuff after the fact. No, I recorded this yesterday. This is a picture of the recording, okay? And we traded this in the chat room real time yesterday. Okay, so now I have my relative strength. I have a good quality gap. Now the question is, how aggressive do we want to be? How aggressive do we want to be? Well, that's the market gap down, right? The general expectation on a mega gap into support is bounce. I'll repeat, the general expectation when a mega gap gaps into support is bounce. The market's gapping down 3.46%. The support is right below. We're expecting a bounce. GM is gapping up. So far, it looks like the stars are lining up for us, right? GM's gapping up, showing great relative strength on huge volume, high level gap. Good. Markets mega gap down into support, should bounce. Good. Right? So far, we're, we're systematically evaluating this. Ooh, then what happens? 
I don't get a one minute high because, well, GM immediately pulled back off. This is a one minute chart. GM immediately pulled back off the open, immediately. Okay, so there's no one minute high, it's pulling back. So we'll just wait an extra minute, no big deal. It completely engulfs, comes right back up. What do we have here? It's a turnaround bar and it's a good one. It's not one of those, eh, it's sort of a wide range. No, this is a wide range bar for a one minute chart on a $32 stock. This is a beautiful setup. So what do I do? I call GM at 932, 3180 by 3120, 60 cent stop. There's the entry, there's the stop loss. It was on my long list in the morning. It was on my favorites list right here. And then we call it right two minutes into the day. So far, we've done our job. We've done nothing wrong. We've followed a systematic approach to making money. And so far, you're thinking, okay, this is the order I have. 3183, you can see, again, I, I apologize, that's a little blurry because I took a screenshot of a video, okay? I was, I nibbled some in the pre-market. You guys saw this yesterday. I nibbled like 100, 200, I think it was two or 300 shares in a pre-market, okay? So this is my entry order right there. There's a thousand shares sitting there. Has not triggered yet. My entry order hasn't triggered for this, for this trade, 3180 by 3120, okay? Guys, GM 3180 by low of the day. 3180 by low of the day. 3180 by 3120. GM. GM 3180 by 3120. 3180 by 3120. All right. 3180 by 3120. GM 3180 by 3120. Watch NKLA over 40, 48. Now it triggers and you're going sweet. It's ripping up $432. 07, 08, 09. We're looking somewhere to get up into like 3240, 3250 range, make a quick 800 to a thousand bucks. Right? Wrong. That's not, how, that's not how it played out. The stock popped up and completely rolled over. And you can see right here, just a second ago, I showed you a screenshot where I was up 400 bucks. I ended up losing $539.99, 540 bucks on this thing. Okay? We did everything right. We looked at a good gap. Compared to the market, it showed relative strength. It had extreme volume. It had room to move. And in the pre-market, it looked solid over that $32 area. One minute turnaround bar. What more can you do? The answer is nothing. Take your stop loss, take it on the chin, and move on. But here's the problem. Many of you are taking the stop loss, throwing your mouse against the wall, and never looking at GM ever again. Why? It's a really good gap. Why would you take this off your list? So we're done, right? Nothing else to see here. Just forget about GM. Wrong, wrong, and wrong again. Too many people do this too often. Because they stopped out on a trade, it's like there's like some unwritten rule. Like they're, there's either like two sides to the camp. One is I have to revenge trade. And the other side is, ah, screw that stock. F that stock. It stopped me out. I'm not looking at that again. Both sides are wrong. Don't revenge trade, that's stupid. But don't also forget about the stock because that's stupid also. It made your list for a reason. Probably because it was decent. And remember, it made your list pre-market when you weren't emotional yet. Many of you get emotional right when the market opens, okay? But you made the decision to put the stock on your list when you weren't emotional. So let's be mindful. I put it on the list because it was a good, a good gap. The first trade failed. Does that mean it's done for the day? Not necessarily. So we did everything right so far except make money. I took the stop loss. I took my licking. We moved on. Okay. But we didn't forget about it. We didn't forget about it. So the stock pulls back, breaks the low of the day a little bit, and we choose to get back in on this buy setup here. GM 3150 by 31. GM 3150 by 31. Now, 
is this the world's best buy setup? Answer, no, it's not. But there's a couple comments I want to make. One, you could consider an 84% rule. Okay, you could. It's not at the original entry yet, but you could consider an 84% rule at 3180. Okay, that's number one. I'm not going to explain the 84% rule. I have a video on it. Um, it's in professional trading strategies. There's plenty of information on the 84% rule. You go look it up. Okay, you could have got back in at 3180. All right, we chose this little mini retest. See it right here, right there, a little mini retest to get back in right around 3150. Give it a little bit of confirmation and then put the stop under the low of the day. All right, 31, 3105. And you can see the trade call there at 945. So it took a good 12, 13 minutes for us to get back into this thing. But it's a high level gap with good relative strength. They usually work. What's the lesson? Don't take it off your list. Keep it on your thumbnail. Watch this. Keep looking at it. Don't let your emotions trade for you. Okay? So we got back in. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is note the $31 area. This for me was the main reason I got back in. Sure, this pullback on the two minute wasn't bad. See it? Lower high, lower high. But breaking the low of the day is not something I generally want to see, right? I would like to see it hold the low of the day. But it broke the low, not by a lot, but enough to make me question it. But then I look, <clears throat> excuse me, I looked at the pre market chart, and where's this shakeout bottoming tail at? Right at 31 bucks. Where did GM pull down to? Just above 31 bucks. So that shakeout bottoming tail plus the buy setup and the bottoming tails in the buy setup make me a lot more interested in this. So what did I do? I put an order right back in at 3149, 3150 area, okay? With a stop loss at like 3105, 31 bucks, that area. And then what happens to GM? GM triggers and then pops back up. What is this red for those of you that don't use TradeStation? This is the money I lost from the first trade, right? So I'm literally, it just triggered me in right here at 3150. You can see this little bluish line, okay? And this is the money I need to get back. So by the time it gets to 3177, you get your money back, okay? So this is what I lost in the first trade. And then this is the trigger of the second trade. And the goal here is to get somewhere back up to 32 to 32.40. That's the range because there's a pivot here. So 32 to 32.50. Remember guys, 100% retracements. Remember we did a lecture a couple weeks ago on retracement levels, level and depth of retracement. You're welcome for tying it all in. The first target's gonna be 50% of this move, okay? The first target's gonna be 50% of this move. So if the high there is 32.40 and the low is 31, probably right around 32 bucks, give or take. That's target one. That's enough to get you one to one. After that, move your stop to break even, reevaluate, and hopefully, hopefully get back to 32.40, okay? That is how a professional goes about trading. Take the emotions out of it and let the chart make the decision for you. Take the emotions out of it and let the chart make the decision for you, okay? So a few more examples. Here's a gap up on a stock that went down one, two, three, four, five, six bars extended into support usually equals a bounce. Well, this stock happened to gap up halfway into this red bar. Now then, is this a level one gap? No, but it's definitely a gap you wanna keep an eye on because it's down six bars right at support. And the last couple bars are wide range bars and you could make a strong argument that this is a wide range ending bar at support on volume. And we get a gap up into this area. So people that shorted the stock are now covering their positions. And when you cover, you push the stock higher. It's not good enough by itself to take a one minute high, but it is good enough with a pre-market consolidation to take a one minute high. And what do we have here, guys, on the micro time frame, micro time frame? Stage four downtrend, bounce, pullback, retest, bounce, pullback, retest, bounce, pullback, retest, bounce, pullback, retest, a transition. Stage four downtrend, double, triple bottom, stage one, back into an early, early stage two uptrend. Yes, there is a lecture on that as well, okay? So we're tying all of these concepts together. 
And there's not one thing here that just sticks out and slaps you in the face. It's multiple concepts converging in an area, which was always what makes good trades great. Okay. So in this case, you can take the one minute high at 27, put your stop either at 2670, but honestly, 2650 is the better stop loss. 2650 is the better stop loss. Okay. I got in at 27 bucks. You see it? 26.9997. And I got out for just over an R. 1,275 bucks. Guys, this is happening like, I don't know, three minutes? I mean, you're, you're done. I and mean, you're done with 1,200 bucks by, by 935, 940, 945. Sure, you're being a bit aggressive, but at the same time, you're not blindly buying something. You're starting with a gap that should bounce because of all the reasons we talked about with a pre-market chart that's in a transitionary from stage one, stage two, and it has a consolidation back to the rising moving average. This isn't gambling. It's a systematic approach to making money. But as I showed you on GM, they don't all work right off the gates, right out of the blocks. But if they don't, keep an eye on them. Okay? A couple more. All right, here's another gap. Stocks gapping up over this area. Okay, what do we have in the pre-market? Stock staying in a range. Right off the open on a one minute chart, the stock goes what? Green right there, wide range red bar, wide range green bar, turnaround bar, right at $50. Three minutes into the day, okay? What do we have? 925, watch, BMRN and OSTK, OSTK over 50 bucks. 929, the market hasn't opened yet. I like OSTK over 50 early on. I'm telling you, I'm warning you. This is something I really, really, really like, okay? In this case, I got in early. I got in right there when this bar finished. I should have waited probably for 50 bucks because that was the high, but I got in a little bit early. So this is one where you could fault me for taking too early of an entry, you could, but the idea is still proper. I just jumped in a little too soon. We should have done 50 by 48.50. $1.50 stop is what we should have done. But we got in just above right here, just above that green bar, okay? With a $1 stop loss, that's the appropriate stop. And this stock went, what, $3.50? That's pretty good, right? Three or four R, that's pretty good. And again, you're done. So one minute chart, guys. We're done in two minutes. By 9.35, I'm done. Made $975 and we're just, that's it, move on. Done. Made 1.6, 1.7 R, and you're finished for the day. Yes, they can be aggressive, but when you use the proper gap with a decent pre-market chart with big volume, they become much, much less aggressive. Okay. So, in summary, in summary, I miss. I can't stand when I make mistakes like that. All right. Entering a trade within the first one to three minutes of the day is more challenging because of the larger spreads and the whippiness. Ideally, these types of trades are better for more experienced traders because guys, if you're not good with your order entry skills right here, if you're not good at order entry, you're gonna have a very hard time trading 930, 931, 932. Why? Things move very quickly, very quickly. Some of you take a minute just to put your stop loss in. That's not gonna fly at 930 in the morning. You're gonna have to be faster than that. Okay, sure, you could place a bracket order, but it takes time to place a bracket order. You might miss the trade. So I'm not saying to just take the trade. I'm saying know your order entry. They're much spreadier, much quicker. You must be able to quickly determine your share size and your position size. You have to quickly be able to place your entry and your stop loss. You likely are going to need to anticipate the entry. You saw me do that on GM. I put my order at 0.49 instead of 0.50 or 0.51. I've done lectures on anticipation. There's the whole chapter on order entry in PTS is 60 pages, biggest chapter in the book. So you're likely gonna need to anticipate a lot of those entries. But if you're not good with these three things, you're not ready yet for 931 trades, 932 trades, okay? Expect slippage on entry and if you stop out. So ex expect it. If you're trying to get into a stock at say 50.00, you might get filled at 50.10, 50.20 because of the whippiness and spreadiness, okay? If you stop out and say your stop loss is 49, you might get filled at 48.90, 48.70, 48.80. Expect slippage. Why am I telling you this? Because then you can share size appropriately for the slippage. 
So if you have a $1 stop loss, maybe share size for $1.10 because you will take slippage. I promise you, I guarantee it, you're going to take slippage. Not on every trade, but on most of these types of trades. Okay, and never forget, ever, these are not random trades. This is not me condoning randomness where you're just buying a one minute high just because you feel like it. Ooh, Tesla's hot today. I'm going to buy Tesla. Don't do it. Don't do it. Your pre-trade checklist still matters. Pattern still matter. Level one gaps, pre-market, early entries, all that. You still have to have something. Level one gap, okay, that's something. Pre-market consolidation or pullback, that's something. An early pattern like a three minute three bar or a one minute three bar play or a one minute turn, all of those are patterns. You're still using a checklist. And it's usually a good idea to wait at least a minute before jumping in. You don't have to. If you have a true level one gap and you have a really good pre-market chart, like I showed you on the one slide, I got in seven seconds into the day. You can do that. But it's also because it passes the pre-trade checklist. I, we also talked about the fact that not every one of these works. I showed you GM. I stopped out. Okay. And I got back in. Don't lose sight of that. Don't lose sight of that. Okay. And then just one more for good measure. Here's another nice gap. Gapping over a wide range red bar and one pivot has room back to about 33.50. Bought the one minute high at 32. Stops 31.80. $1,019.37. seconds. I was done on this particular day on Lulu and Urban, two minutes and 16 seconds into the day with $1,948. Two minutes and 16 seconds into the trading day, you're done. And guys, I'm not trying to tell you trading is easy because trading's not, it's hard. But how many people had to work 160 hours for $1,948? A lot. There's a lot of people out there that net $2,000 a month on their 30K a year job and they work 160 hours to make what we made in two minutes and 16 seconds. Okay, the flip side is you can lose money too. And this is why your pre-trade checklist still matters. Okay, patterns still matter. Okay, all those things are important. All right, but if you do want to trade the open, you can do so with high quality gaps, good pre-market charts, and an early morning, maybe one minute high, one minute turnaround bar, one minute three bar play. Okay, so I hope that you guys learned a little bit about trading the market open and understanding that you can be profitable in 15 to 30 minutes a day. No, it's not some myth. It can be done, but it has to be done responsibly, just like we talked about. And you can see on GM, not all of them work, but don't take them off your list. All right, Jared Wesley here. We'll get back at it again next week.